Canva tutorial for beginners, the ultimate guide to Canva. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can master Canva as a beginner because I know there are a lot of tutorials out there explaining how to do things on Canva, but we want to break it down step by step. So even if you're someone that has never used Canva or any other design tool, can still easily navigate through the Canva platform. Let's jump right in. The first step we're going to take is to create our account. Now, creating an account on Canva is completely free. However, Canva also has a pro version. The pro version of Canva allows you access to exclusive features such as background removal, exclusive vectors, images, and videos. But to create a free account, simply head on over to canva.com, then click on sign up on the top right. From here, you are going to continue with another account and you can sign up using Google, Facebook, your email address. Put in your email address and proceed with password creation. So we're going to complete that and I'll just log on to my account over here like so. And you can choose to sign up with your pre-existing account on Google or Apple if you just want to keep your sign up a bit more seamless. And I'm just going to verify with my pre-existing account as well. Now that you have created your account on Canva, this is what your dashboard is going to look like. On the right, you have a space to manage your projects, templates, and then applications. Then on the top right, you have your account, settings, as well as your basic Canva information. Now let's get started with designing on Canva. One of the most essential parts of Canva is how you can customize a template. Canva has all different types of templates available, from simple designs, presentations, videos, to much, much more. You can really design anything you want on Canva, but if you don't know the basics of design and customization, it can be really difficult to do so. We're going to be designing or customizing simple templates, and this will help us in understanding how we can basically customize anything that we want. You will see that Canva has this panel where you can search for what you're looking to design. So if I'm looking to design just maybe a poster, I can search for a poster over here. Once I search for a poster, it will show me the different templates available. I'll just search for poster, and you guys can see the different posters that it is recommending. You can find anything you want on Canva, but for the purpose of this particular tutorial, I'll show you guys a simple square Instagram post that I'll be customizing. So we're going to go back on our home page and we are going to search for Instagram. Once you do that, you can see there are two types of Instagram posts as well, a portrait or a square. Now you might be designing for your own website, maybe you're designing for your phone, maybe you're designing for your own desktop and you have a size in mind. If you have a certain size that you want, you can just click on custom size on the top right. And once you click on custom size, you can change the unit from pixels to inches. Then you can put in your own customized width and height, and then you can generate your own empty canvas. This allows you full customization on the sizes that you are creating for the designs you create. I'm going to take a simple square canvas over here. And once I open up the templates available for Instagram posts, you guys can see there are so many different templates and all of these are customizable. However, the templates that have a crown icon on the bottom right are available only to pro users. You can use these templates, but they would have watermarks. So I recommend going with a free template so you can fully customize it and make it your own. Now, let's say that I want to get started with this one over here. I'll click on customize this template to get started. And let's say I just want to create a simple poster or a simple post for Instagram. That is a quotation. Wonderful possibilities ahead. Now, this is what your canvas is going to look like. If you want to select any item, you can do a left click. And once you do a left click on any item on Canva, you have options to edit it on the top. This includes editing the image or the vector. You can apply filters. You can also apply effects as well as upscale or colorize the image. You can also flip the direction horizontally or vertically. Then you also have the option to change the border style. Any element that is present on the canvas has this purple border. You can add a border weight and border rounding. 
This allows you to highlight certain elements or make them individualized or captured within a specific shape. You also have options to animate any element. If you click on the animate function on the top, you have two types of animations. If you're creating a presentation, you have page animation, which means that whenever you flip from one page to the next, the animation is going to be played. Then within your particular page, there are photo animations, which means how the element is going to appear once the photo is opened up. Now let's get started with customization. Let's say I want to add a quotation by Edgar Allan Poe. It's a poetry quotation. I'm pretty sure it's from one of his poems. It just says, all I loved, I loved alone. I think it's something along those lines. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to go with it. Now for that, I don't want to add this butterfly illustration. I'll simply hold this butterfly illustration and then I'm going to click on delete. Now you guys can see there are these bubbles that are being used, which I personally really like. So I'm going to move the text up and I don't like the font of this text. To customize this, I can simply select the text and then from the top left, I have the option to change the font. I also have options to change this font size, the font color, as well as to make it all uppercase, strike throughed, underlined, and as well as changing the alignment, converting into lists, customizing the spacing and adding effects. But first, let's customize our font. Click on the fonts over here. Once you click on the fonts, on the left you have different fonts and text styles. Now you want to go into the font section and you will have a bunch of different fonts, but it can be really difficult to find a font that you like. So you can simply see a section on the top that displays different styles of fonts. Let's say I'm looking for something that is elegant. I can simply search for elegant over here and Canva by itself is going to recommend all the elegant fonts that it has. Let's say I'm looking for something that is vintage. So if I just search for vintage, it will show me all the fonts that are similar to a vintage style. Let's say I'm looking for something that is display and you guys can see there are a bunch of different fonts that are specifically built for display. Now, I am going to go on ahead and use this font. I just think it looks really nice. And once I've chosen the font, I can get started with customization of the text. To do that, just do a double click on the text and you can just backspace and write your own. And all I loved alone, like so. Now, once I have this text, I want to place this at the center of the particular canvas. To do that, I can just hold this entire block and you guys will see these purple lines appear. Once you see a diagonal and a, a horizontal vertical line appear, that means that your particular box is completely centered. Again, this means that the box is centered, not the text. You guys can see because of the way that this text or the way that this illustration is made, the text looks like it's a bit at the bottom. So I'm going to move it slightly above by holding the arrow icon on my keyboard. Now I'm going to take the top text and I'm going to add the quotation, the person that wrote this, Edgar Allan Poe, and then I'm just going to hold this and place this down below. Again, you guys can see there is a vertical purple line that is going to display how aligned your elements are. So this is aligned at the center. Now I'm going to place this above a little because I want this to be above the central point. So you guys can see there is a purple line that is going horizontally across and it is placed right under my quotation box. And that is how I like it. I think it looks better this way. And then I'm just going to take the name and I'm just going to place it right down below. Now, once we have completed that, it's time to add our own flare. So we can go onto elements on the left. And once we go onto elements on the left, let's say I want to include a photo. I'm just going to search for alone over here and then I'll go into photos and I'll just go into search aesthetic alone, dark aesthetic like this. So you guys can see there are some amazing illustrations and let's say I want to include this photo in my design. However, if I place this right on top, it's just, you know, blocking my image. So what I can do is that I can do a right click and then click on layer. Once I click on layer, I can click on send backward and this will send it backward. I'm going to click on layer and I'm going to just send it to the back completely. 
so it is placed as the background image. And I'm just going to resize it a bit like so. Now, once I have completed that, I don't like the design with these elements over here. Or let's say I want to customize this design. If I want to include the photo in a different way, if I want the photo to appear as a archway, then I can use a frame to do this. How? Well, simply go on ahead and go into elements and then search for frame. Once you search for frame, you're going to see this categorization on Canva. It's called frames. In this, you can place any type of element, video, or photo, and it's going to take the shape of the frame. So I am just going to search for frame arch. And you guys can see there are a lot of different arch frames. I'm going to take one and I'm going to place my image within. Now that I've done that, I'm going to crop the image accordingly. So I'm just going to resize this image and then place it like so. And now this is what the image looks like. I'm going to just place it over here. I'll just make sure that it aligns well and looks nice. And once I've done that, I can just resize this block and it looks like an archway. Now I'm just going to place it over here and then I can click on layer and then I will click on send to back. And now this has been sent to the back. Now to bring about a bit more of a cohesive look, I might want to add some more elements to tie this in. I can simply go into elements on the left and I will search for dark aesthetic again. You can really search for any type of aesthetic, any type of vibe that you are looking for. And you guys can see there are a bunch of different things that I can include. And I want to include something that is not too vibrant. I want something that's really dark. So I'm going to actually search for bricks and I'll go into the graphics and I'll just search for brick floor. And you guys can see there are a couple of different illustrations for that, but I'm just going to take this one and I'm going to resize this a bit. I don't think I'm going to make it too large. I'm going to rotate this by holding this icon over here. And I just want to make it blend in. So I'm just going to place it over here, click on layer, and then I'll send this to the back as well. From there, I'm going to click on the colors on the top. Some elements in Canva allow you to customize colors, whereas some do not. So you just have to see when you click on it, if on the top you have the options for colors, you can customize them. So I am going to take the image colors and you will see within Canva, it shows you the photo colors, which means that the colors that are present within these elements that you have placed. So this is the photo that we use, the archway one. And I want to match the colors in this brick floor to the colors that are present within the particular archway. And I think this looks pretty nice now. It just looks a bit more blended. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on layers and then show all layer. And then I'll take this layer over here and copy and paste it a couple of times. Now, once I've copied and pasted it, I am going to click on this and I'm going to crop this because I want to actually make this blend out a little. So I'm just going to place it over here and change the transparency like so over here. And then again, I'm going to layer these, send these to the back layer. Yeah, they're sent to the back like so. And like this, you can customize your design however you want it to. I want to move these out a little. I think I'm going to just move these over here like so. And just like that, we have a pretty nice design on Canva. Now, once you have created a design, it's time to save your design. From the top, you want to customize the title. So I will add my coat one as the title. Then I can click on share on the top right. And once I click on share on the top right, you can see you have a few different options for sharing. Now, if you want to add other people, you can simply type in their email address and give them access to this design. However, this can be a bit inconvenient. So you have options for a collaboration link. So you can create a collaboration link, and this is different from a public viewing link. A collaboration link is going to allow the other person to make edits within your design. Whereas if you go with a public view link, that will allow anyone to open up the link, view the design, but they are not going to be able to make any customizations to your design. So if you want to give someone access to customize, choose anyone with this link, and you can give three options, can view, can comment, or can edit. 
So if you want them to have the ability to edit your design, you can let them edit it. If you want them to only be able to comment on it, you can allow them to comment on it. Or if you want viewership access only, then you can copy this link and share it with the relevant people. Now, moving on, you also have options to directly share your designs on Instagram, on your website, and then below that, you have the option to download. You can click on download over here, and you have options to download as a PNG, JPEG, PDF standard, PDF print, MP4, or a GIF. The reason why you have options for MP4s and GIFs is because if you have added any type of animation, if you save your picture as a PNG or JPEG, your animations are not going to play. So if you want to keep your animations, you have MP4 and GIF options, so your animations remain intact. You also have the option for more, and if you click on more over here, you can embed your designs, copy them to your clipboards, as well as send them to your phones, present and record, share them on socials, save them on Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, PowerPoint, and your box. Then you also have messaging applications that you can share this to. Once you've completed your design, you can go back and click on Canva on the top left. Now, this is how you create a simple design on Canva. What happens if you want to take your design and include it in a presentation? A lot of people don't know this, but if you go into presentations, there are amazing templates available. Let's take an example template like this one. Now, if I have a presentation that I am creating and I want to take my pre-existing designs and include those in my presentation, to do that, simply open up a page in your presentation. Once you have a page opened up, you are going to click on projects on the left. Once you click on projects, you can click on see all on your designs. From here, just select your design and your design will be imported. Your design is completely imported. However, if you want your design to retain its original shape, then you can use a frame to do so. And this is a great way to also resize your designs because with the free version of Canva, you don't have access to resize designs on your own. So you can use this type of feature to open up the same design in multiple different sizes. So you have a design for different social media platforms, different posting orientations, and more. Now there is much more that you can do with Canva, including website creation. This has to be one of their most recent features and you can build some amazing landing pages with that as well. Additionally, the easiest way to proceed with Canva if you want to learn more about Canva is by presentation. So if you open up any template for presentations, I'll just search for aesthetic presentation. You will see that you have a very wide variety of presentations available and you can pick out a template that you like. Each element within a presentation is customizable. And if you want to add transitions between presentations, you will see on the bottom you have all of your slides. You can click on the section in between and click on add transition. And you have different types of transitions, including line swipes, stacks, flows, chops, as well as match and moves. So you can pick out a transition and you have the duration, and then you can apply this between all pages, or you can also choose to customize transitions between pages. So some can have a dissolve transition and some can have a match and move transition. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you are now able to get started with Canva. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or queries about Canva or any other platform, make sure to leave those in the comment box down below. I would love to know what you guys have to say.